the present dominion over submissive sanctified stones. Number two, the prophetic dominion over sinning, scorning stones. Number three, the perpetual dominion of the saving, sanctifying son. Number one is the present dominion that Christ, the Savior, Christ, the sanctifier, Christ, the baptizer, Christ, the Lord and King. The present dominion he has over those who are submissive and sanctified. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2. We're looking at verse 5. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. He also as lively stones. He refers to the believers as stones, lively stones. The deadness that sin brought in our lives, all that deadness have been removed. We're quickened, we're made alive. We now live in Christ, and Christ lives in us. He also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that he shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness, out of sin, out of all the degradation that you had in the past. He has called you out of dark, covered, hidden, secret sinning, and he has called you into the marvelous light, into his marvelous light. It makes us sense, and now he has dominion over us. In Isaiah chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 13, Isaiah 26, verse 13, O Lord, our God, who are repented, is now our God, was saved, is now our God. We're now lively stones, is now our God. We're built into the spiritual temple, is now our God. Oh Lord, our God, all that lords beside thee have had dominion over us in the past. They had dominion over us in the past. They had authority over us in the past. They ruled our lives and controlled our lives by their sinful power. All the lords have had dominion on, on, upon us, over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. He, he only is now the one that has dominion over us. Let's come to number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the prophetic dominion <clears throat> over sinning, uh, scorning stones. <clears throat> the uh, prophetic dominion over sinning, uh, scorning stone. We're looking at uh, Zechariah chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7, we're reading from verse 12. It says yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Yeah, there are sinners who make their hearts as hard as adamant stone. The word comes to them, it will not penetrate. The water of the word comes into them, it will not go in and refresh them. The fire of the word burns around them, they shake it off. They will not allow the word to bring conviction to them, to bring conversion to them. They make their hearts as hard as Adamant stone. The more they hear, the more they sin. The more they hear, the more they scorn. The more they hear, the more they rebel. And it says, Yea, how can this be? They have made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the word which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. The people that hear the word of love, the word of mercy, the word of salvation, 
and the words of the goodness of God, and yet they remain adamant and sin. But the day of the Lord is approaching, the day of the Lord is coming. Eventually, if they remain like that and they die in that condition, or they remain like that until the rapture happens, pity for them, sorrowful we are for them, they'll be lost. They'll die in their sin, all their bravado, and all their courage, all their rebellion against the word of the Lord. They will regret, not only for one day, one week, one month, one year, they'll regret for eternity. Whoever they are, whoever they are, here or over there, young or old, the people that rebel against the word of salvation with an adamant, stony heart, They'll regret for all eternity. It tells us in verse 13, in verse 13 it says, Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I will not hear, says the Lord of hosts. Then in verse 14, in verse 14 it says, But I scattered them, with a wild wind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. We'll come to number three here. Number three, we're looking at the perpetual dominion of the saving, sanctifying stone. He saves today as we're called upon him. He sanctifies as we call upon him and he gives us grace, abundant grace, sufficient grace so that we'll live the life that meets him in peace when he comes. And then when he comes to reign to have the everlasting kingdom, those who are saved and sanctified and they abide in the Lord and they're sustained by the grace of God. They will live forever and ever with him in Jesus' name. We're looking at Daniel chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 13. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. I saw the, in the night vision and behold the one, one like the son of man came to him, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him, the son of man, before him, the ancient of days. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is, tell me, his dominion is, shout it, shout it. An everlasting dominion, we shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Look at verse 27, in verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the great and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the most high. Are the saints here tonight? I said, are the saints here tonight? Here and there and everywhere, saved souls, sanctified souls. It says, and that dominion everlasting shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. You'll be there. Where are you? I said you'll be there. All the grace you need, all the strength you need, all the love and the mercy of God you need will be showered upon your life and he'll prepare you. When the Lord will come, he will get you safe and secured in his chamber, in his kingdom, 
one is fighting the Antichrist and fighting uh, all the rebels of the world, you'll be safe in the dominion kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Let's stand up now and pray to the Lord that the Lord will grant us the grace, saving grace, sanctifying grace, sustaining grace that will be steadfast until that final day. Pray and the Lord will make you ready, qualified, abiding in the Lord until that final day. Prophecy was given to Daniel, striking prophecy of the smiting, smiting stone. And Daniel explained it. And we are the people that the prophecy is fulfilled in our days. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, help me. Get me ready. Get me prepared. I want to live for the Lord and for the Lord alone. This is the message. You need to prepare yourself. The Lord has spoken to us, telling us of what will happen. The stone, the stone without hand that crushed the Nebuchadnezzar, that will crush all the kingdoms of the world, that stone is supernatural. That stone is Christ. There's no other person. And we have been made, made to know that that stone, if you accept the stone and surrender your life to Christ and allow the stone to smash sin out of your life, crush sin out of your life, you will be qualified to make it. But if you don't allow that stone, that is Christ. If you don't allow that stone to crush sin out of your life, eventually you will fall on that stone. And that stone will grind you to powder. That stone, a lot of people are stumbling on that stone. They have not accepted what Christ offers. They have not accepted the sacrifice of Christ. They have not accepted all that Christ has done. They are living their life as if to say there is no future. There is no tomorrow. There is no judgment. The wrath of God will not come upon sinners. But this night, you have heard it, that that stone, if you stumble at it, if you reject all that the stone offers, at the end, you will regret. Pray and say, Lord, this stone will not be a stumbling block to me. This stone will not be a stumbling block to me. This stone will not be a rock of offense to me. This stone will not be rejected by me. And it will happen if you don't scorn at that stone. If you don't scorn at the word of God. If you don't scorn at the warnings of God. If you don't scorn at all the things you are being shown as you come to the Bible study. You hear the word of God talking about your evil, talking about your unrighteousness, talking about your carelessness, talking about all that you are doing. You continue with it. You are scorning at that stone. Pray and say, Lord, I will not scorn at the stone. Let God hear your voice. Open your mouth and pray. I say, Lord, I will not scorn at this word. I will not scorn at the stone. I will not scorn at the truth I'm hearing here. This stone is the sure cornerstone. If you have this stone, you are secured. If you have this stone, you will make it. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, my faith is hinging on the stone, the cornerstone, on Christ. I don't know where your faith is. Some people hit their faith on the things of this world, what they have acquired. They hit their faith on a politician. They hit their faith on the things they are pursuing. They hit their faith on so many things. But let your faith be on Christ, the sure cornerstone. Pray and say, Lord, let my faith not be shaken. Let my faith not be wobbling. Let my faith be focused, firm on the sure foundation stone. Let God hear you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Because if you don't make Christ your sure cornerstone, eventually that stone will come as a smiting stone. And every evil Every unrighteousness, every wickedness will be smashed by that stone. If you are working with your own opinion, your own religion, this is the way I want to serve God. This is my own opinion on this. Not what you are saying. Not what the Bible is saying. After all, there are other people who don't believe the Bible. They live their life. If you are scorning on the word and the, you scorn on the sacrifice of Christ by the way you are living, you despise all that Christ has suffered for you. Eventually, eventually, then this mighty stone will come. This mighty stone will come. And he said, when Christ comes, he said, the word that will come out of his mouth will be like fire. And it will consume all those who reject 
and all those who resist the truth, pray that you will not be among them. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I've heard your words today and I don't want to resist your truth. I don't want to resist the word you are showing to me because if you do that, you oppose the authority of Christ, you oppose the word of Christ, you oppose the truth, then the stone will come as a shattering stone. Shattering stone. Shattering stone. And that stone will crush every unrighteous kingdom even we have here on earth. Time will come. None of the kingdoms will stand because Christ is coming. And the best thing we have to do now is give Christ chance in our life. Pray and say, Lord, I give you chance in my life. I surrender to you. And you can only do that by allowing the stone to smash sin out of your life. Smash unrighteousness out of your life. Surrender your life to Christ. Repent. Because if you don't do that, the time of judgment will come. And if you go to Christ now and fall on that stone and say, let sin be crushed out of my life. Let unrighteousness be crushed out of my life. Let stubbornness be crushed out of my life. Let worldliness be crushed out of my life. That stone will do that. But if you wait until the stone comes on you, it will grind you to powder. When the stone comes, the day of judgment, the day of punishment, you will not escape. And that's why we have to pray and say, Lord, with what I've heard, I'm not waiting upon the time this stone will come to smash, to crush my life. Call upon the name of the Lord. We have been told this stone is the sovereign stone. This stone has all power. Even Jesus declared it. All power is given to me on earth, in heaven. He has all power. He is the sovereign stone. And he will reign without a rival. He will reign without a challenge. He will reign without anybody opposing him. That's why we have to surrender our life to him and live for him and for him alone. Brethren, you have to do that because a day is coming. The day of the supreme stone. People are living as if to say there is no tomorrow. But from the Bible study you've had, a day is coming. A day is coming. And nobody knows that date. It is a day appointed for the smashing stone. A day of judgment is coming. A day of punishment is coming. If you are throwing away all the opportunity the Lord has given to you, hey, I don't know when you will make up your mind, if not tonight, and say, Lord, all these privileges, all the opportunity to amend my ways, to do the right thing, to turn away from sin. You must ask God and say, Lord, today I'm giving my life to you because a day is appointed. Day of judgment is appointed. Day of perdition is appointed. Question is, if we neglect, if we neglect the privilege God has given to us, if we neglect the opportunities we have, if we neglect the, 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 the opportunity of making amen, making restitution, correcting our life, turning away from sin, if we continue with our unrighteousness, and then the rapture takes place and you miss it as a member of deeper life, with all the Bible study you've had, with all the exposures you have received, how will you escape? That's why you make use of this day. Because this is the day the Lord has made. And he's pleading with you. Calling on you and say, amen your ways. Surrender your life to Christ. Because Christ is coming. If you have given your life to Christ, allow him to dominate your life. Control your life. Be in charge of your life. As a sanctified believer, don't go back to sin again. Don't go back to unrighteousness again. Don't develop it in ears. This is the time for us to pray. As you go back, you continue to pray and say, Lord, I want to live for you so that that stone, that stone will take away every unrighteousness in my life. As we round off the prayer right now. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Father, we thank you so much for the way you have spoken.